Welcome to Inspiring Teachers, a show bringing you classroom tips, motivation, and stories from successful educators. Join Tavis Beam and Danny Hogger as they explore the why of teaching. Oh, welcome to another edition of Inspiring Teachers. Danny Hogger here. Tavis Beam is in the woodshop class prepping slats for the next project, which is amazing. Like, I don't get to have any sawdust in my day typically, which I have no regrets for, but I know he's into it. And we welcome you to another amazing edition. And we have a very special guest here. Dr. Samantha Fesich is here, professor, author, and big fan of making an impact in the lives of students, an educator and professor who really cares about her student relationships, communication, and dedicated to improving her practices and the field of education at a higher level. Thank you so much, Dr. Sam, for joining us today. Thanks, Danny, for having me. I'm super pumped to be here. Yeah, yeah. What's been really neat is as we've journeyed through the early months of this program and find out how many people there are out in the world, and especially on social media, who are trying very diligently to do so much more than just a nine-to-five job in education, but really trying to bring professional development and the the student-centered focus into the classroom. And I started seeing your tweets pop up more and more on Twitter, and you're a great follow. We should put your uh, at here on the screen. We'll make sure we, we promote that at SF, oh, it's, it's S. Fesich, your last name yeah. is S-F-E-C-I-C-H. And tell us a little bit more about how you came into education, Dr. Sam. Sure. So um, I'm a former special ed teacher. I used to teach students with multiple disabilities and oh, it was so much fun. I loved it. So I was a teacher that used different types of technology with my students. A lot of them were very involved. So we used the smart board for some simple cause and effect. And I found that I really enjoyed working not only with students with special needs, but also with technology because technology can really open up doors um, and windows for our students with special needs, especially those um, um, who who can be very involved, whether they're nonverbal or in wheelchairs or whatever their needs may be, technology can really um, be used to level that playing field for them. And I found that tech, ed tech and special ed blend so nicely together, especially for independent skills and um, uh, skills that you want to incorporate into the classroom for our, for our friends with special needs. And I found that I really like that. So I pursued a master's in instructional tech online uh, through Penn State. And um, then, you know, through that degree, more doors open for me to work with uh, practicing educators and integrating technology into their classroom. So that was a lot of fun and training them a little bit. And I found, ooh, I kind of like working with adults too. This is kind of fun. Um, so showing them some cool tech tools, how they can incorporate it meaningfully into their classroom and was able to have a PhD opportunity present itself. Bebopped on over to State College, did that for a couple of years, and now I'm here at Grove City where I teach pre-service teachers, and it is the funnest job. I don't know if fun is the real word, but I'm gonna say it is. Oh, I'll take um, it. Yeah, cool. <laughs> it's the funnest job I've ever had. We we are always, um, there. I'm always learning so much from my students, um, whether it be tech tools or strategies, and it's just so much fun to be around future teachers. They have that energy energy, and that excitement to go out and make differences in the world. And wow, they really are making amazing strides and differences around the world in education. Well, hats off to you for working with Yay. the teachers of tomorrow, which is the best time to reach teachers when the energy level is at its highest and the world is full of potential. You know, I um, have enjoyed the five years so far that I've been in teaching. But prior to that, I did a few years in broadcasting in the nonprofit sector. And I remember in the nonprofit sector going to a large training day from a national conference and people saying, oh, look at you, you're new and you still think you can implement new ideas. And I thought, hmm, not the best <laughs> attitude for a yeah. field supposed to be helping people and finding new ways could be the best way to reach new individuals. So I think it's spectacular that you're reaching out to a, a very energized population. When you started down the path and you've experienced lots of different educational experiences, I wanted to not use experience. You could tell I was searching like scanning. No, I love no, it. no results found. Like connection is <laughs> error, error. Really disconnected. Calculating. And then I use connection and disconnected in the same sense. What <laughs> it, how do you find that you've grown as a as an educator, maybe as a person too, through this journey? Yeah. So just reaching out of my comfort zone and putting myself out there, whether it be on social media, um, promoting the ideas that my students have through retweets and um, shouting them out, shining a light on them, um, really, you know, 
pushes them to to think more about what they're what they're putting out there on social media and it pushes me to you know give them another little nudge You're like you guys you guys got some great ideas put it out there you got this i got this we got this together we'll we'll survive um going on podcasts like this this is scary for me like i uh yeah right before like you do the countdown the three two one like the nerves like <gasps> okay <laughs> i just so are you just doing great my comfort zone. yeah <laughs> thanks uh so just getting out of the comfort zone doing mm-hmm. workshops and sessions um yeah it's a lot of fun and it's a great learning experience for me as well because i think you grow from every experience and it makes you a better educator uh, for and with your students it definitely does and the cool part about you having done that and encouraging people to do that is that's certainly what's going to happen in the classroom Right. No teacher walks in and executes a hundred percent of a plan on any day. Right. We always are adjusting and reflecting or sometimes walking in and be like, this isn't going to work out the way I thought it was going to. And no. you, you need to be able to know what to do when you're not in that comfort zone. That's so much of, of what we do each day. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. And then I was looking at Amazon and reading excerpts and reading through your book after I'd purchased it, Edu Magic, challenging the thought that teaching is something that we do with just certification, but it comes from a much wider experience and encouragement to continue to learn and encouraging students to dream. What prompted you to write that book? Yeah, so I thought to myself, what would I want to know, you know, 20 year old Sammy, you know, an undergrad, what would she want to know before she got into teaching? What things would help her today? Um, you know, before I graduated, like I graduated in the early 2000s uh, from college, but what if I were a teacher today, if I were a pre-service teacher, what do I need to know? One of the things I need to know is I need to get online. I need to get on Twitter. I need to get on Instagram and start putting out some positive professional stuff. Um, Because, you know, back whenever, uh, whenever I was an undergrad, um, social media was just coming out. It was like, oh, you don't want to be on that, you know. But now it's like, yes, you have to be found. You're going to educators and administrators want to find amazing things out there about you. And you can start doing that your freshman year in college. Put out great takeaways from class or an awesome bulletin board that you totally rocked, you know, down in the preschool or, you know, an awesome manipulative or a lesson that you created or just ideas or thoughts that you have on a Ed, Ed Week or Edutopia article, you know, just start, you know, spreading some breadcrumbs and then like your senior year, you'll have this beautiful live feed of things that you've learned about a great reflection tool stuff that you can be posting through fields and student teaching and promoting yourself on your blog or your website mm-hmm. so i was like okay i need to have a digital presence i need to have a pln um and just like just lots of like ways technology has changed um and how you can incorporate them into student teaching and field work as well and just encouraging that growth mindset and challenging yourself to do better and be better for students wonderfully said and really i think very clearly (laughs) executed by teachers who are going above and beyond i thought the same as you that this was something to social media was something to avoid and something that Mm -hmm. we're teachers. We better stay completely under that. And on a certain sense, like, yeah, there's definitely a personal life. That's not a part of the public persona and the public profile, but I had no idea how many thousands of teachers were engaging with each other, uplifting each other, sharing motivation and sharing resources, like links to actual professional development and, and writing, blogs and podcasts and publishing things that can help each other and I was like I didn't know teachers were using this as an asset and a tool and I felt like a like a light bulb moment when when that happened and it's really really wonderful so there's a lot of really good resources for teachers to to go out and and uh, go after who are some of the resources or some of the people who you look forward to um, seeing when they're when they are online yeah, so what I look forward to seeing Kristen Nan pop up on my feed. She's always doing something cool always. and innovative. Always. Oh my gosh, I just love all the stuff that she does. Um, any of my pre service teachers, when they're tweeting stuff from field work or student teaching, I'm like, oh yes, go girl, that's awesome. I love, you know, whatever lesson you just did with Cool Slime. I don't know, whatever they did. Yeah. Um, I just love to see the stuff that they're doing and follow up, you know, because I usually have them their freshman, sophomore year. But, you know, as they as they get into field experiences, student teaching, I like to see whatever they come across. I like to see our um, alumni and whenever they come become practicing educators or current educators, the amazing thing and work that they're doing um, in their classrooms. It's a lot of fun to just see them flourish and grow. Um, but definitely Kristen Nan for sure. Sarah Thomas, love following her. Oh my gosh, she always has great stuff to see and read. Um, who else? Brian Kulik, he's he's pretty awesome. Um, 
Brent Cooley, he always has something motivational or cool every week that he tags me. I'm like, yes, this is good stuff. Um, yeah. Um, those are good ones. Yeah. yeah. That's All right. A good list. Cool. <laughs> and you can you can definitely when you check out Dr. Sam on on Twitter, you can see who she's following and get some inspiration that way. That's yeah. probably a good way to do that. I wonder with your years of experience and the education that you've received, what is your why of teaching, Dr. Sam? So what is Ooh. the answer to the question of why you're doing what you're doing? So I am working with pre-service teachers or future teachers or teachers in training, however you want to phrase that. Um, for a similar reason that my mentor Connie Nichols does. Connie, I met Connie about four years ago and she told me, Sam, I teach pre-service teachers to impact classes and students around the world that I will never see through the amazing work of our pre-service teachers that we train up. I'm like, oh, yes, preach. That's what I want to do too. So I like, I like that why. And that's why I do it every day is to impact students in classrooms I will never see through the work of our pre service teachers and training them up to be educators of excellence and impact. Nice. I like it. Yeah. I like the nobility in that too, the unforeseen guidance. It's kind of uh, wise. It has a certain Yeah, it's kind of Yoda, right? It is. Yeah, it has a little <laughs> bit of that vibe to it for sure. So let's say that you're working with a pre service teacher, it's your last meeting. What's something that you hope that they have gained from your interaction? Like if they were had an exit poll when they walk out that door and a camera asks them, so what did you learn from Dr. Sam? You would feel really good if their answer was this. Yeah, never stop learning. Always be a lifelong learner. Um, yeah, get outside your comfort zone, whether that be going to a workshop, presenting at a conference, moderating a Twitter chat, going on a podcast, try it and never stop learning. So always don't think that learning stops with that degree in your hand when you walk across that stage. Awesome. Just keep going. Just keep yeah, going. There's that's, always more to learn. That's fantastic. What's something that you've learned recently that's lit the bulb for you? And I know that's a surprise question. So what, what's a moment recently? Because I've, I have them all the time. And they're not always a joyful learning because I'm a U.S. history and econ gov teacher. So uh -huh. my first, I used to teach eighth grade and we would stop at World War I. And now we were, we were done with that in October. So I'm like every week trying to stay ahead and learning additional things like not fun facts, but we're covering, um, you know, war right now. And, and some of the details, like we took 600 tanks to Vietnam and just forget everything else. Just think about 600 tanks manufactured and what that take and, and all the people who were serving. And th so that moment is for me like, oh, wow. Like when I tell them this, I think that's going to pop some eyebrows. And, and then we can have a discussion and look through material and do all the standards that come with that. But I like to have those little moments where like, what can I give them as a hook that'll like pull them in for, for the beginning of a lesson? What's something for you recently that, that kind of turned that like, information bulb on for you? So I kind of, so as you started asking your question, I thought of one example, but it was totally unrelated to the question as you kept going. So I'll go with your question. Okay. So the first thing is, so to hook them, one thing that um, I did differently this semester was we do, we always do augmented reality um, station rotations. So they get a sense of what it is and experience like merge cubes and Nearpod VR field trips, uh, Google expeditions, Quiver and Cromville. Um, some brain anatomy dissecting one. Um, and what hooked them was the Nearpod uh, VR and the Google Expeditions. Like, oh, this is really cool. How do we make those? I'm like, I have no idea, guys, but let's figure it out together. So it actually became, they're like, oh, I kind of like this. This is neat. Let's make one for ourselves. So we, we looked up how to do it on Google Tours, and that's the project they're working on this week. Kind of unplanned. Uh, I had something totally... It, in mind for something different but you know we, we went with their learning what they want to do and they are awesome sauce so I'm going through and I'm walking around checking them out we got someone doing something on Antarctica someone doing something on biomes someone went to Washington DC it is so and they're like linked to all these different content areas and standards so someone's linked to um English and some are linked to science obviously and social studies oh my gosh it is so cool I can't wait to share those out on uh, social media the amazing stuff that they're creating in Google Tours and I was like wow we'll figure this out and if it fails that's okay we'll learn from it if totally. it's if it works you know that's okay too so yeah that's yeah. where all the learning comes from Dr. Sam yeah. we're so grateful that you take the time to be with us today Thank just you. one more question if you are working with a pre-service teacher and you are reflecting on that and suddenly you walk into a Google tour of your own of your past and it's you in the pre-service learning. What's something you would tell yourself back then that you think would be helpful to that budding teacher about to enter the classroom for the first time? 
Ooh, that's a good question. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's okay to make mistakes in student teaching. Um, it's still practice mm -hmm. and you are still, you have someone um, in your corner backing you up. So take a risk, try something new uh, during student teaching, whether it be a technology tool or a strategy, take a risk and it's okay to make a mistake. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay. There you go. Down in the comment yeah. section, let us know what's a risk that you could take this week that'll help your students. And Dr. Sam, tell people where they can find you on social media to learn more about all the things that you're doing. Yeah, so you can find me um, at SVestich on Twitter and Instagram and www.svestich.com. Look me up on my blog. Sweet. See all right, yeah, great talking with you. We hope to talk to you again soon. Maybe get you on a panel with some other people and have a whole group of ideas. That would be fun. Let's do it. Let's totally do that. For now, this is the end of Inspiring Teachers. Don't forget to like and subscribe. New episodes every week, and we'll see you on the next edition. I'm Danny Hogger, and for Tavis Bean, we'll see you next time. Class is dismissed.